Peggy 16. Nous sommes à Cologne pour la Gamescom et aujourd'hui, focus sur le jeu Crisis 3. Et pour nous en dire un peu plus, rencontre avec Michael Reed, producteur du jeu. Uh, so Crisis 3 takes place more than 20 years after the events of Crisis 2 in 2047. So a lot's changed in that time. So the Cell and the Ceph have, have been having a little bit of a war. And during that time, Cell has managed to beat down the Ceph to the point where, you know, they're, they're sort of subdued. But what they've done is they've built these domes over all the major cities where the Ceph is to be contained. But what's interesting is under these domes is it's created this unique environment of what we call an urban rainforest. And inside here, we inside each of these domes, or inside the dome specifically, which is the Liberty Dome, where Crisis 3 takes place under New York City, you have this broken down city that has, you know, all of these um, tropical plants and, and fauna and all of this other stuff living in there, but the amount of erosion that's happened to the buildings and the ground has created all these unique environments such as, you know, canyons like we showed at E3. We also have different ones like islands and misty mountains and all of these different areas. And some people are going to be surprised, but some of these spaces are really, really big. At Gamescom here this year, we're showing off the multiplayer for Crisis 3. So the Hunter mode, um, what happens in Hunter is you start off, you have two, uh, two guys in nano suits. They're permanently cloaked and they only have bows with them. Everybody else plays troopers. So what happens is, so the two hunters spawn, you have all the troopers that come in, and basically the troopers need to fight for survival for two full minutes before the hunters take them out. But the interesting twist we have is when the hunters actually take the troopers out, they turn into hunters themselves. So it slowly tips the scale in favor of hunter over time. So the longer you survive, the more XP, the more points you get, and hopefully the troopers end up surviving right till the end. You want to be that last guy. It's really super high tension when you're playing the game, and it's a lot. It's a lot of fun. I'm right here. Come and get me. So the New York feed, the best way to explain it, it's a non-interactive uh, dynamic achievement system. So what we're showcasing right now is there's three feeds that are set up and there's going to be a fourth one that's going to be put in as well. So one is called Friend Challenges. Uh, a friend of yours did uh, three stealth kills in two games. So that may pose a challenge to you to do four stealth kills in three games. We also have developer challenges, which are predefined challenges that will pop up maybe every week, maybe every couple days as you go in and play. And those will be very similar to the friend ones, except they're provided by the developers. The other one's lobby challenges. So people in your lobby, they aren't your friends, but they will pose challenges as well to try and beat them for extra XP too. But there's really only one of those. The fourth one we'll come out with later is actually squad challenges. We're not really talking too much about that right now, but I think people can sort of figure out exactly what that is. But on the main screen, when you're waiting for multiplayer, you also have a map of New York City, and it will sort of cycle between all of the different maps and gameplay modes and show what your friends have been doing in there as well. And based upon all of the data that we collect out of the game, I mean, there's, there's almost limitless achievements that we can, we can possibly end up creating. 